Hi everybody, this is Tom, this is Quick Watercolour Birds and we are going to get into even more colour and just a little bit more complexity, so let's have a look. So in this episode we're going to look at doing a quick, loose, simple version of a bird that could be quite complex, which is a kingfisher. So kingfishers are amazing little things. We get them here in Britain and quite often they look completely out of place because they've got that amazing electric blue and then that beautiful bright orange and quite often we see a dart or a splash of them in amongst the kind of slightly duller uh, kind of greens and other colours that we get around. So they're an amazing little bird. They're great fun to paint but they do have a few little pitfalls that can get us, especially when we're looking to create something that's a little bit quicker and a little bit kind of lighter and fresher than something that's more kind of worked over a long period of time. So one of those pitfalls is that we have two very opposing colours on the colour wheel. We have bright orange and then we have bright blue. If those colours start to mix too much, uh, in certain circumstances that's a good thing, but in a kingfisher we want to keep those colours very clear. And if they do start to mix, they're going to start cancelling each other out and giving us very muddy colours. So we need to be careful to keep these colours fairly separate. Then the other thing, probably the other two things that we can struggle with here, they have quite a complex face. It's almost like a little patchwork of, or kind of a jigsaw of these different pieces and they all need to kind of interlock in a way that looks like a kingfisher, but also the colours are quite separate. We've got orange, blue and then also white patches but also white patches in shadow, which would be like more of a half-tone, mid-tone colour. So there's quite a lot to work out in the face. It doesn't have to be complicated, it doesn't have to be hard. I'm going to walk you through not only the drawing stage, but obviously the painting stage as well. And it's a great example of taking something that could be very complex, but distilling it down into something really simple and really fun. And then the final point is that they quite often have interesting markings, especially on the head. So we're going to look at how to denote those. And the quick tip section is going to be looking at painting an eye, not just the eye of a kingfisher, but a few quick little tricks for tackling any eye of any bird. And so just before we dive in, I want to talk you through the colours. We've got thalo blue, which is that very electric, very greeny, vibrant, but also very powerful, exciting, fun blue to use, but it can take over if we're not careful. I'm going to be using a little dash of pyrrole red. As we know, when we put that with the thalo blue, we get lovely rich deep darks. It's also going to help give us some of the slightly darker shadows of the orange chest. I am going to be using a cadmium orange, but you could very easily mix your own with the pyrrole red and a nice bright, vibrant yellow, something like lemon yellow or new gamboge. In this case, I'm going to be using new gamboge just because I favour the slightly warmer colours. Lemon yellow would be equally good. I think that's everything guys, we're just going to dive into this one and see how we get on, so let's have a look. Okay, so I've got my drawing mapped out. I've used a 2H pencil to do the lighter lines, I'm going with an HB pencil to make it a little bit darker. This is a little bit darker than I'd normally go, just so you guys can see it. And as usual, it's kind of big shapes. This is a little bit more complex than some of the other subjects we've looked at in this series, but we still start with the big shapes. Big shape there, you could either go with a round, although it's a bit more of a, an egg shape there. Again, you could either look at the egg shape as being that shape there with that kind of angle to it, or you could think about the, the angle of the whole body, which I find a little bit easy, and it kind of flows through into the tail as well. Once you've got the big shape of the body, I tend to think then, as long as I've left enough room, about the smaller shape of the head. And it's the proportion of that small shape in relation to the big shape. And again, there's a very slight angle to it. I've ever so slightly exaggerated the angle of mine. I'm just going to bring that beak up a bit. I tend to over-exaggerate the beak. This is a problem I fall into. I quite often over-exaggerate the length and the size of the beak of a kingfisher. Although they are very long and very big, we don't want to overstate it. I also tend to overstate the eye sometimes. We've also got little points to look out for here. If we draw a line down from the eye, we kind of hit this area here. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if that area here was over that way a little bit, which is where I started, it has a very different feel. Equally, if it's further over that way, again, it has a very different feel. So it's not about necessarily right or wrong. We can alter our drawing to be different from the photo, but the point is we want to make it a 
conscious decision and not kind of an accident that makes it look a bit odd sometimes. Um, and then once we've got the big shapes in place, we start breaking it up into the smaller shapes. So for me, the shoulder kind of pad, you might call it, becomes one big shape there. We stick on these smaller shapes kind of later. So they're almost like stuck on afterwards. For me, one of the challenges of a kingfisher is working out kind of the jigsaw pieces of the face in here. So what we get generally is a nice deep dark coming in here. I'm simplifying from the one of the reference photos that I'm using. Dark, nice little blue patch there, white patch there. It might become white in shadow and a kind of a patch of orange in here. As I said, we don't want the orange and the blue to flow together. So we're gonna tackle certain areas individually and other areas like this large blue area, we can get kind of all flowing together a little bit more. So that's the drawing guys. Don't forget you can hop over to Patreon to find the line drawing of this if you wanna try it yourself. Uh, I will also put up two reference photos that will help you do this. As I said, I don't always work from just one photo. I kind of piece together little bits from various photos. So yeah, hop over there and check it out. It's patreon.com forward slash Tom Shepard Art and the links will be below as always. So let's dive into the painting. Okay, so here we go. We're going to tackle it in these two stages that I mentioned. Very light undercoat followed by a slightly uh, darker, shadowier, more detailed kind of top coat. So we're going to go really light in this first one. Don't be afraid to go really light. Uh, we're going to start off with a little bit of yellow and then we're going to start dropping the orange into it. So where's the lightest part of this area kind of going to be? It's going to be in here. So we're going to start here, not too much water and just break the brush stroke so we get some nice white of the page. And we're going to come right up into this shape here. Nice direct kind of sort of, yeah, expressive brush strokes not being afraid to leave little bits of the white of the page showing. Then we're going to straight away introduce our yellow into this lovely, sorry, our orange into this lovely, into this lovely mix. This is where we can start to sharpen up the drawing aspect a little bit. And we're just going to let that paint all kind of flow together, a little bit more water in there and just let that paint flow. We can always come back in and make it darker later. Let's take out some of the intensity of the orange in there. And that's a nice kind of starting point, some broken, uh, areas just in there and uh, we're going to go a little bit darker down at the bottom remember I don't want to go too dark too quickly um, and we want to make it in the darks we want to make it a slightly more muted color so mixing a little bit of all of the colors together there and if we just hit it while it's wet we get a nice light feel to it it's not going to go too heavy and then we can drop a little bit more um, paint in there and just kind of just see, I'm just giving it a little bit more interest. And that'll probably be it. That's a really lovely kind of start point. We could drop in a little bit more orange in places. Maybe we just on the underside here, slightly more saturated color and not so much water. We just drop in a little bit of orange in places and then we just leave that alone. That's it. We don't want to go back to that area. And then going to operate the same kind of principle in here. And we're going to map out the lovely sharp jigsaw piece kind of shape initially and it flows into the beak that orange and then we get this lovely little yellow area here let's leave a little bit of the white of the page showing and then we go back to our our lovely kind of slightly darker ready color and look we're going to get these lovely um kind of washes going on now so again just letting that color spread and do its thing lots of water so it kind of it almost levels itself out that way there we go and that area should should kind of work so that's the orange yeah it's a little bit crude but don't forget the blue is going to come back in and cut into it and also we can use our our kitchen roll to pull out little bits where we want the blue to maybe flow a little bit more but what we're not going to do is put in the blue now that's what we don't want to do if we put in the blue now it's going to shoot into the rest of the bird and we're kind of going to get into a little bit of trouble there. Um, so let's take some of our, our slightly muddier shadowy orange just while it's wet. I just want to place it in there and then let it do its thing. And I just want to place a little bit in there while it's still wet and then we let it do its thing. We can coax it a little bit, but we don't want to start working the paint too much. And that's got a lovely light feel to it. It's not gone too heavy, it's not gone too dark. Thank you. 
And then what we can do while we're waiting for that to dry off before we dive into the blue, I think we can go into the beak. So the beak is going to be kind of, it's got a cool feel to it, but it's cool with a little bit of purpley vibe in there. So a tiny touch of the red, nice and wet. And we're going to come in here and just going to map out there. Even that's a little bit too, too, um, too blue. So we're just going to come in here. And remember, we're just laying in the, the start point of the beak. We can we can push it a little bit darker, wet into wet, but I don't want to go too dark. And we're just going to leave the white of the page showing for a little highlight there and a nice little highlight there. What we can do is link together that orange in here with the beak by just placing in like an intermediate colour, which in this case is a little bit of a red. And then we can go to our red and our blue which are going to give us a lovely deep dark. And just while it's wet, we can place a lovely deep dark in there and we're going to get a lovely kind of graded look to the beak. If we want that to spread a little bit further, we go in with a damp brush and we can almost just take the pigment and get it to meet the other pigment. And we get this lovely kind of, kind of variegated wet into wet wash in that area. Um, and don't fiddle with it. We're going to kind of leave it alone we're getting a little bit of backwashing from the yellow into there. For me, I kind of like that stuff. It's not a big problem. And then we're going to let that area dry off. Slowly but surely, we're tackling different areas. I mean, really, that's happened very quickly. So I kind of need to let that dry off. Uh, and then once that dry, we're going to get in the blue nice and light. We're going to let that dry. And then we're going to come back in and put on little details. OK, so I used a hair dryer, literally took 30 seconds just to dry out that colour. See how as the colour dries, it's not so intense. It looked very, 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 very strong and orangey before. And now it's dulled down to what I feel is like a slightly more natural, earthy orange, which is great. That's kind of what we want. So the next stage is to get in the blue. And again, we're going to start very light. I'm going to start somewhere, as I always say, that I find easy to understand and that really electric blue on the back that is very light and very watery, uh, sorry, is very light, so we're going to make it very watery, that feels like a good place to start. And we want to make sure this is a nice clean blue. So I'm going to go to a new part of the palette, make sure I've got a totally clean brush. Splashing, splashing colour everywhere as always. Uh, yeah, the phthalo blue. Lovely, vibrant phthalo blue. Lots of water because we want it to be light. There's no real rush at the moment because we're just working in this area. Uh, just trying to find that kind of lovely colour that comes in there. I want to get it nice and splashy. In fact, I'm kind of avoiding getting into the back, but actually we don't need to because that's all. We're just doing a light first wash. So we're going to get on loads of colour, nice and light, but we can afford to go a little bit darker in some places. I don't want to wash over the orange too much, but it, it doesn't matter if I do a little bit. And purposely letting some of the white of the page show through. And just treat it as a separate area. We don't have to be kind of too worried about linking it all together in any great way. Um, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't all have to flow together, the different colours. That's not a problem if it doesn't. Uh, and then we can take some darker colour and we can start to kind of put that in there as well. Whoops. We've got a blob of pigment there, so we need to get that out. There we go. And just a nice, clean, simple wash. Let's place in a little bit more of a turquoise just to give it a blast of that lovely turquoise colour that we so often get with um, with kingfishers. and or we appear to get sometimes. So letting the letting the colour just kind of flow together there. Keep it really simple, keep it really light. We can tighten up the odd little area, but I don't want to too much. Uh, and then we kind of into that bit there. And we're going to take that exact same principle into link together those areas. Don't work the paint too much, but let's link them together a little bit. We're going to have a bit on the shoulder where we get some of those lovely dotted markings. So I'm just going to pull out a little bit of pigment in places. You could have painted around this area and I'm going to paint around it in some respects later, but just a little bit of markings in there. Uh, can we go a little bit more of a strong phthalo blue 
them in this area here just just while it's wet I just want to place a bit of a stronger color in there oh and I know what I've done I've totally got rid of by mistake uh, an area a lovely area of white on the back there so while it's still wet it's good job I noticed that so you guys if you if you're doing this don't forget about that <laughs> that area of white up by the head sometimes you get so carried away with the how fun the paint is I forget to actually keep an eye on um on what <laughs> on what I'm doing uh, okay so while it's still wet we can get in some slightly darker colors but we're doing it kind of wet into wet so it's a really really nice opportunity to just place in some darker colors at this stage and it will only go where we've put the water or the wet paint so we're not committing to anything that's too kind of scary here we're going to go a little bit darker on the underside there we can start to paint around some of those markings while it's still wet yeah we get those lovely little markings on the wing coming in there uh, we are going to get so we get this lovely deep dark on on this part of the wing here we're going to go a little bit more ready and not really deep dark but fairly deep and we're just going to come in and do that sort of thing down at the wing down at the bottom there and we could almost just get that as a nice simple brush stroke down in there kind of trapping the light on the back there and then we're just going to let all of that dry off and then we can come back and put in the details and the markings one thing you can do if you want to is is go back in with a completely dry brush it's probably a bit too early actually we'll come back to that idea but if you want to you can pull out some of the pigment to create lighter areas if you're worried you've gone a little bit too dark in places so everything's staying nice and light we're doing fairly well um, for time here so all we want to do is just get a bit of color on the on the head again we're going to keep it very very simple very light let the paint just break over the head so we get that kind of lovely markings that we we have on the birds on the kingfishers and that's it and then for starters that's it for starters <laughs> uh, we, we can come in and we can I don't want to get too caught up in the, the markings at this stage but we are going to do a little bit of of kind of wet into wet and we're going to make that back side of the head just a little bit darker and I'm just letting the brush kind of dance around and we're creating that kind of illusion of markings on the head without getting too caught up in them I think that's the secret we don't want to get caught up in them at this stage and also I'm keeping it very very light I'm going to slot in a little hint of turquoise very saturated turquoise and it's going to give us a slightly denser deeper dark at the base of some of these areas which I want and that's kind of that little that turquoise is lovely for giving us a slightly broken brush stroke in places um, yeah and that's kind of it look how he's got this lovely light feeling to him I haven't gone too heavy I haven't gone too dark I don't want to go too heavy or too dark as the painting progresses where else have we got to effectively fill in then we can let it dry off and we can come back and finish it off so we're going to go really light in here really light there but we're going to go a little bit darker in these areas here so go back to slightly more saturated blue and we're just going to do that sort of a thing I'm going to come out from under there like that that's going to give us a slightly darker feel in that area but that little bit of light blue just there and then we want that little zing of light blue kind of on the back there as well so this is like a little jigsaw piece area we're just trying to piece it together slowly would have been possibly better to do the light blue first and then do the markings of the wing later and now we start to for the first time we can start to bring in some really deep darks I think so we can do that sort of a thing just in a couple of places we can come in under there under there and that's kind of gives us a clue as to how we're going to tackle some of the other areas but just while it's wet in the odd place we can go a little bit darker with some of those markings I think we can just under there go a little bit darker and see how it starts to shape the bird a little bit more 
And it's up to you. We could dive into some of this area kind of wet into wet at this stage, or which I think might work in the odd spot. Um, and other areas we might we might just wait a little bit. But see how you can just drop drop it in while it's wet. And we start to get a bit of shape to the bird. That sort of thing. That's going to kind of stay a wet into wet area, I think. Um, we're going to let that all dry off. And that's a great place to stop. That's a great place to let it all dry off. Um, and then we can come back in and put little details over the top. What the most important thing is keeping everything fairly light. Although I've gone dark down here, I'm fairly happy to go dark down here, but I wouldn't want to go dark here. And I wouldn't want to go any darker than that on the head because I want to have the opportunity to be a bit more in control of how dark I go in the second stage. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to dry it off. We're going to do a quick tip section where we look at how to paint eyes. There's a few different ways we can paint quick, simple eyes in watercolour. So let's get into that. Okay, guys, in this quick tips video, I'm going to be showing you just a few different ways you can paint a very simple eye. So don't forget, as always, we could go far more complex with this. In some paintings, I do far more complex eyes, but in this one, we're going to keep it really simple. So these two, I've done a quick wash of colour which I'll explain more in a minute, but we're going to start with a very simple eye and we're going to work up to a slightly more complex eye. So for me, the simplest type of eye is when we're just using a black. And in this case, I'm mixing my, my red with a Prussian blue, and that gives me a really deep, lovely deep dark. I don't want too much water because I want a certain level of control. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically paint the eye like that. And all we're going to very simply do is leave a little highlight. You could leave just one highlight or we could leave a couple of little highlights. It's almost that kind of classic cartoon eye you might draw when you're younger. But in the right context, it can look great, uh, especially when we get into kind of doing other markings around the eye and stuff like that. It looks a little bit crude at this size, but you can see what an effective kind of eye we get, especially, as I said, in the right context. Now, we can take that idea a stage further. We can do the same principle where we fill in the whole eye. We even leave the same sort of little highlight there. We even fill in the whole eye really nice and dark. But then what we do, we just we dry out, we kind of clean out our brush. We dry it off a little bit with still a little bit of dampness and we just take it and all we do is just pull out some of the wet pigment in the bottom half. And what we get is this lovely, you might have to keep pulling it out because some of the pigment will kind of drift back in to that area. You can even kind of manipulate it so it looks like, kind of like that. Um, and instantly we get this lovely softness versus the hardness of the highlight. And what I would recommend doing is you just be gentle with it because you don't want to destroy the pigment, but you can keep pulling out some of that. So what we get is this really lovely, realistic, but so simple <laughs> to do eye. And you can keep pulling it out as much as you like. And then again, we kind of, we can do what we like. We sometimes even get little markings around the eye where we do that sort of thing. So I'm just showing you a few quick tricks to creating your eye. And for me, that looks just a little bit more realistic than that one. And so in this next one, we're going to take the same sort of principle. But what we're going to do is we're going to, um, I've laid down a red. And even with that red, I've pulled out the bottom part of it there just to create it slightly lighter. And now what we're going to do is we're going to almost like the eyelid is covering there. So we don't need to worry too much about, um, we do need to leave a little highlight there and maybe even a little highlight there. But it's almost like we're casting a shadow on the top half of the eye and maybe even come down into there a little bit. Now it's up to you, you can soften that down with a damp brush into that bottom area. And now we have this lovely little wash and we can just keep dropping more colour into it. We're going to do the black of an eye of the eye in a minute. I didn't mean to go over that bit there. I'll tell you what we can do. See if it's too late. I'm going to try and leave that little light there 
and see if we can get a light. There we go, on the dark of the eye as well. There's a little highlight. It's not quite in the right place, but it, it should still work. Yeah, so we're creating a, a still a simple eye. We've only got one colour so far. Now if I take my Prussian blue and mix it with my red, we're going to get a slightly darker colour yet again. And then I can place that in this top area up here. And I can start to come into the dark of the eye, but only paint the dark of the eye. I'm still not quite committing to the deepest dark of the eye yet. Then while I let that dry off, we're going to come over here and use another little trick where we just have this lovely little highlight there. And we're going to use the same principle, but we're going to mix a nice dark kind of muddy colour because it's a yellow eye. And we're going to use the same principle, but we're going to do it in a slightly harsher way. And I must remember to leave that white there. Very simple. And then we're, all we're going to do with this one is do a slightly softer transition between colours. So we're just going to soften that eye down ever so slightly. Soften it down there with a damp brush. And just leave that as a lovely little highlight. And then we're going to let those two dry off and I'm going to come back and show you the finishing touches. Okay, so we are going to take this a stage further. So obviously these you can do in one hit. These take maybe one, uh, two or three kind of different passes on the same thing. So here we're just going to mix a really deep dark and all I'm going to do is come in now because we did a bit of a wet into wet wash there and all I've got to do now is just kind of fill in the dark of the eye, kind of painting around that little highlight and remembering to leave that little highlight there. And that's quite a fun little eye. Again, you could even take it a stage further and then pull out a little bit of pigment in the bottom corner. So it's all it's always up to you how far you take this idea. You just keep pulling out that pigment in the bottom corner, or you could just leave it as just solid black. So what are we gonna do with this one? Rather than working wet into wet, we just had yellow. Obviously these would these tend to make more sense as we start to um, you know put some of the other details around and you'll notice with these quick watercolor birds I'm not doing a huge amount of detail um, it's up to you how much detail you put in there but again that's a super quick super easy watercolor eye something like that and then we're just going to take it a stage further that was wet into wet now this one was just yellow then a brown wash. I'm now going to do a secondary brown wash, slightly darker. So all I'm showing you here is it's much the same principle as that, but we're doing it in a few different stages. And that wash just kind of drifts over. You could even get into doing a few little details if you really wanted um, and bring that around there. And it's just a, a different way of doing the same thing as the other one. It's just kind of creating it in a few more layers. Um, and again, you can, while that's wet, why not? You could go even darker under there. Something like that. And then again, this is the this is really the, the technique that takes the longest, but it's also the one that has the most capacity for going really detailed, possibly more detailed than we need in most of these. So again, we're going to let this dry off. Then we're going to come in with a final dark. Okay, so very finally, we've got our really rich deep dark of the red with the Prussian. Quite neat paint, we're looking at that sort of consistency. And we're just going to come in and just fill in the darker the eye. Again, we could leave a little bit of a, a lighter colour down at the bottom there just to give it that shininess. Can't resist going and doing some of those eyes. And again, we kind of makes more sense once we get some of the like the little extra details around the eye but you can see you don't need a huge amount of detail to make an eye look good you so many that. different ways just have a practice like i said there's no real definite formula to a lot of this stuff what i'm hoping to show you is some of the basics then you can kind of run with it have a play and learn to do your own thing let's get back to the painting Okay, so everything's dried off. It's got a nice light feel to it. And what I don't want to do is for this particular series of videos, 
and on the whole is go back in and overwork it. What I want to do is just pick some areas to bring in a slightly deeper, darker shadow and try and do that in a very kind of sensitive, quick way. <laughs> so we're going to just come in a bit more shadow in there. I remember we spoke about just softening an edge. So that is my orange mixed with a little bit of my red and the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest touch of blue. Too much blue, especially the thalo, and it'll turn it to a completely different colour. The blue is there just to almost dull down the orange to a slightly different, kind of grubbier, if you want to call it that, um, earthy orange, just in order to get a bit more tonal variation in this area, just to give it a bit more shape, that sort of a thing. And that's it, I don't want to go any darker than that, you could if you really wanted, just with a little touch of of deeper dark, just go in there. And just while it's wet, we've got like a miniature wash, so we're just going to place a deeper dark in there. But that's it, I wouldn't want to go any darker than that, and the main thing was reserving a lot of these lovely lighter areas. We could do exactly the same in the colour up in the face, it just gets a little bit more orangey, maybe just there. So a little glaze of a slightly darker or slightly more intense colour, which will make it darker, so don't go over the top with it uh, in terms of, yeah, don't take that idea too far. Uh, and see how that just punches up the feeling of the orange a little bit, but it's I've kept it light in that little area, so that's kind of the next stage. And for me, that's the orange done. Um, very much the orange done. And then we can get back into... I think the head next and then we'll finish off with the body because it's hard to know how much detail to put into the head, uh, sorry, into the body until I've tackled the head. So I'm going to go in and tackle the head and we're just going to introduce a little bit more of a feeling of markings in there. That's that, done. Really simple. And this, this stage, guys, is going to be really simple. I'm just going to use phthalo blue and the turquoise. Um, I want to make sure that orange area here is dried off before I dive into the head, and I think it just about is. Okay, so now we do want some darker colour in the head, but I don't want to go too dark. So this is an opportunity now to um, kind of use the, the nature of the watercolour brush just to push that a little bit darker. So by that I mean it's got kind of got a... What am I trying to say? We kind of use the broken brush technique and then we slowly introduce some of these little markings in places. Letting the brush do a lot of the work for us. Uh, and then it's a case of how dark do we go and where are the darks? So the darks are very much in this area here. And I don't want to go as dark as, say, um, some of the other photo, the photos that I've put up. Um, we're just going to go a little bit darker in there and uh, we're going to go just a little bit darker in here and we're going to feed that idea into now this area down here and this for me is where it gets interesting and a little trickier we want to leave the white of the eye and just a little white of the eye there and there and then kind of link that together and we're going to come under here into that area there. So that's kind of mapping out the pattern of the eye area. And then we're going to take that colour, some of it, and we're going to soften it down. So we're going to use that softer edge brush. Or we're going to use that softer feel to the brush, sorry. With damp water, or damp brush, sorry, I'll get there in a minute. Damp brush, not too much water, and we're just softening the edge. And we're just kind of Introducing a little bit of a darker tone into that area, we're going to bring that, kind of work that damp edge into the, into this area now. Take some of that paint and just bring it over there, but I want to be careful to leave that brow there. And then is there anywhere where I can kind of go a little bit darker in places? So now we would mix together a little bit, little bit of the red with a little bit of the blue 
I'm just going to use it as like a little dark accent in places. So just on the, the edge of the orange and the blue here, I'm just going to push it a little bit darker, but we're not going to go too far with that idea. And just going to come in the top there. It won't make perfect sense straight away. We can get away with a little bit of complexity in the head area. I don't want to make it too fussy, so I'm looking to link together areas of similar colour and but also just leave a little bit of the white of the page in places. Um, and that's kind of working quite nicely. There's a there's another layer to do in there of dark. But yeah, we're on the way with the head there. We could push some aspects of that area a little bit darker while it's wet. So we can go a little bit darker in here, I think, and just push that dark in there. And see how soon as we start pushing that dark in, it starts to make sense of that area. And actually, that's working quite nicely. We we don't need to maybe go much darker than that. That works pretty well. So we're going to come into this area here now. And we're going to... I don't want to destroy all of that lovely colour that I've done on the beak already. So we need to find a way of kind of finishing off the beak without destroying all of that lovely colour. And it's going to be in laying down the shadow and then using the softer the kind of damp brush technique just to lay a shadow over the top of it and then introduce a little bit of a dark into there just while it's wet. So you see I'm being very careful not to destroy that other lovely wash that we already had. It's a tricky it's a tricky area to do the area of the beak um, and we kind of want to err on the side of keeping it nice and light nice and simple. It's going to pull out a bit of pigment in that area. We could continue to go a little bit darker in the eye because as it as it kind of bleeds, it's going to lighten that area. Uh, we've got that kind of line through the beak there, there and into the nostril, and that's about as much as I want to do in the beak. Anything more, and it's going to make it feel too heavy. And then we're going to come in. And just look at this area under here, and I wonder if we go with a slightly more purpley area, and it's almost like the white in shadow there, but we just leave a little bit of the white showing just in there, and we kind of link those areas together. I think the white on the back can stay exactly as it is, and that's got a nice light feel to it. For me, that's all kind of working. We're keeping it light. We're keeping it fairly fresh, which is the idea behind these paintings. And we're really kind of homing in on the final stages here. Because remember, this is, and I will say it, keep saying it, is this is something you could spend more time on and but and kind of do more detail. But I really just want to stick with these quick watercolour birds. We do a little bit of detail on the wing. And it's just a nice little bit of detail over the top of our lighter wash. Do we need to do much more than that on the wing? I don't think so. We're getting kind of the feel that we want here. I wonder if we just go a little bit darker there and a little bit darker there to differentiate that from the, the slightly lighter electric blue we tend to get on the back of the birds. Uh, and is there anywhere else that we can go a little bit darker? I think just in here. And we're, what we're doing is kind of using slightly sharper marks, slightly less water. That's a bit too watery. Um, and just depicting some markings on that shoulder area there. I'm going to bring that down into the existing dark. And I think we're pretty much kind of there. That's a nice little dark area. I'm just going to go in with a small brush and pull out some of that pigment. And I think we're pretty much at it. So I'm just softening it down. I'm going to take some of those markings up there into that. And yeah, what I find is I get to this stage and I'm always thinking, oh, I could do more, I could do more, I could do more. But do we need to is the number one question. It should be always be the number one question. Isn't always. Little details here and there. I like how the beak's turned out. I like how the eye has turned out. Like I said, given another circumstance, we could do it in a slightly different way. And what I'm sort of trying to do here is find a way to just bring in a little bit more detail without overcomplicating it. But that's a nice little dark at the end there. 
and I think I'm just just trying to find the odd little detail and the, there's still one or two to be found. I think there's a little bit more around the face. And what I want to do is just run a slightly darker line just along there and up into that area, almost just to separate the orange from the beak and the orange from the face. And that's it. And that's it guys, you see the, the, so much of that was down to that first wash and then just little details and a few little darks over the top and we've got it. So there we go, I hope you enjoyed it. As always, so much fun to paint these quick loose watercolour birds. Hopefully I showed you how to tackle some of the pitfalls in painting a kingfisher in particular, but also just a reminder that quite often we benefit from keeping the watercolour light and having a lightness of touch, keeping it fresh, not overworking things too much. One of the big mistakes I make with kingfishers is just going a little bit too heavy and a little bit too dark, especially with the features around the eye. There's a little bit of a balance to be found because your darks will tie a watercolour together, they'll make it pop and come to life, but if we go too dark and too heavy we can get into a bit of trouble um, and the whole painting can start to feel a bit dark and a bit heavy. So there's loads more of these to come. The next one is going to be a little blue tip where we take some of the same ideas but simply apply it to some different colours. So stay tuned for that guys. Do consider subscribing if you're enjoying these. That's how you're going to hear about any new ones that come out. You can check my website out at tomshepherdart.com. You can follow me on Instagram where I'm particularly active with all sorts of other stuff. And if you do want to take this all a little stage further, you can join me over on Patreon for kind of deeper tutorials, uh, quick tips, a little bit more behind the scenes, as well as supporting the podcast and supporting these videos as well, if that's your thing. So until next time, guys, happy painting, happy creating, and I shall catch you in the next video. 